one of the alternatives to backing up, and this doesn't this doesn't work for off-site stuff, but something that will help to prevent data loss in the case where a hard drive fails, and we've talked about hard drive uh, failures and having to send our drives away to data recovery specialists, and that can be pricey. Um, one of the things that we can look at is redundant data storage. So what that is in, in its simplest form is say we have two hard drives connected at the same time and your computer thinks that they're one. So anytime you save a file, anytime you import your pictures from your digital camera, they get saved on two independent hard drives. Mm -hmm. but you don't have to actually copy them. You're just saving it to one. So it could be your C drive, right? Mm -hmm. Or just your whatever mount point in Linux. So that gives you redundancy. Uh, John is, is, is right in saying that that's not a backup. It's not. But it gives us redundancy so that in a case where a hard drive fails, you've got a second hard drive that has that data on it. That's in right. the simplest form. That's, that's called RAID 1, uh, mm -hmm. where you've got two hard drives. But it's not always ideal, and, it's, and it's, it is a case where, well, what happens if there's a fire? What happens if there's you know, something like a lightning strike that yeah. takes out everything in your computer, and that second hard drive is done anyways? Yeah. But in a case where it's a hard drive failure, and I've had enough hard drives crash in my time that mm -hmm. to know that it's important to have uh, redundant copies of my files, mm. the nice thing about redundant file systems or redundant hard drives is that Essentially, in, in many cases, if one hard drive fails, you can keep working using just the other one. And then you just, you know, as quickly as possible, you get out that old failed drive out and put in a new drive to replace it so that you get that redundancy again. Hmm. So that's, uh, that's something that's really nice. I had a client that, uh, who called us in because they were having some trouble with their server running the backups. And, and sure enough, get in there, and the, the one hard drive had been failed for, like, almost two weeks. Oh, that's funny. So what's well, not? It could have been really, really dangerous, right? Sure. Because here they are running a, a, an entire business on their server with one hard drive, but the point uh, that I made to them was that you're, because they were asking, well, do we really need to replace the second hard drive? Do we really need that? And I said, look, this redundancy is what saved you. The, whole, yes. the last two weeks that you've been working on this one hard drive is because of that redundant setup that you had, and that's in this most basic form. So the fact that you've been able to work for the past two weeks, the fact that you didn't lose any data, is because of that redundancy. And so is there any warning um, to let you know that it's on your backup system? It, well, in a RAID environment, you're going to know if a hard drive has failed, as long as you've got a good enough card with an interface that warns you, right? Just like mm -hmm. any, uh, it will actually tell you that a hard drive has failed, mm. right? Because I'd need one of those. I wouldn't be able to tell <laughs> otherwise. Yeah, you'd, and you'd have to keep an eye on it. Some of them have also like little lights at the front. Mm. It'll be green if it's good and red if it's bad. Mm. It can be that simplistic too, right? And we're not talking about servers. We're not talking about um, you know big bucks uh, systems. What we're talking about is like my home computer. Just knowing that my family photos are safe. Just knowing right. that you know the the thousands of photos that I've taken with our digital camera since my wife and I were married eight years ago. Well, what would ever happen if I lost all those? Right. That would be devastating. Mm -hmm. And these days, you don't even really print them a lot. You, you print you know, the occasional photo, but for what it's worth, they, to be honest, they're mostly just on my hard drive. RAID 5? Um, RAID 5 is cool. RAID 5, what that does is with, say, four hard drives, you've got striping and mirroring, so you've got... Uh, and, and we don't need to get into all the different levels of RAID. RAID is a is, uh, redundant array of inexpensive disks, and that will allow you to have multiple disks operating as one. So there's all different levels of what that means. Um, RAID 5 being striped and mirrored uh, means that it's going to be a little bit faster than a RAID 1, quite substantially faster. It, it has four hard drives and the ability to fail out one, sometimes two, depending on how many drives you've got. And, um, and it gives you more space. Because where a RAID 1, you've got two one terabyte drives, they're mirrored, so you only get one terabyte. It doesn't matter that there's actually two terabytes of space. With a RAID 5, you're going to get more space. So that's an advantage to that. Disadvantage is that all the drives have to be the same. With any RAID, pretty much, the drives have to match. So if you, if you start out with a whole bunch of 500 gigabyte drives, and then you decide, you know what, I want to put in one terabyte drives to make this thing bigger, then you've got to replace every single drive in the array. And that's, that's expensive. That's where RAID doesn't hold to his name, hmm. really. Just backing up a little bit, I was talking about um, just the fact that the RAID arrays have to have same-sized hard drives. That can be a big problem. And in my case, 
One of the reasons that I want to talk to you about this stuff is because I'm actually looking to improve the uh, data redundancy here at Category 5, because we're at the point now where we've done 96 episodes, 96 hours of video, yeah. plus all the remarkable. editing and, and all that stuff. Well, it becomes a remarkable amount of space. Mm -hmm. We're using a lot of space. Right. And so we're at the point now, we're very, very close to the point where we're going to start losing redundancy because we're out of space. Mm. So my only option at this point is going to be to start moving things off of the RAID array and moving them onto independent drives because we're going to mm. be out of space. We're not going to have room on that RAID. Mm. So, so I want to start talking to the community at Category 5 and find out, you know, what, what do you think I should do? So I'm going to explain some of the many, many options that are out there. One of the things that I want to do is I want to be able to recycle some of those old hard drives I've got. I've got several 500 gig hard drives. I've got a bunch of 400s, a couple of 300s, I think a 160 kicking around. They're all SATA drives. So I don't want to have to run out and buy a whole bunch of hard drives to build an array when there are devices out there that might allow me to be able to pick and match. Sure. So devices uh, such as the Drobo. The Drobo allows you to plug in up to four drives, and unlike a RAID, those drives can be practically any capacity. How so do you, how do you, oh, D-R-O-B-O, Drobo. That's right, hmm. yeah. So advantages, of course, of the Drobo over, say, RAID, I, and, and I'm, I'm not touching on speed right now, because we're talking about data storage. I'm not talking about a production system. This is just so that I have a place to store all my big files. So for you, it might be all your images, your movies. Uh, I've got a digital video camera. My Sony Handycam that we were talking about last week is digital. I always import them into MPEG files, and it becomes a lot of stuff. So maybe that's you. Maybe you need some redundant storage for that stuff. So we're not talking about the, the speed and the... Uh, like how fast the array is going to be, that's not my de deciding factor. What I want is to be able to build something that's expandable. So the Drobo that we just saw there, you can take up to four drives. You can hot swap and pick and match, which is really, really nice. That's hmm. the advantage. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be the same drives. You can, I can grab some of those drives and just throw them in. And then when I want to put in more space, if I've got all four spaces used up, I can just fail out or remove... The, the, the smallest hard drive in the array. So if I've got that 160 gig in there and two 400 gigs and a 500, I can just fail out the 160, remove it, and pop in a one terabyte. And all of a sudden, it rebuilds itself, and then I've got more space in my array. So that's very cool. Very cool. Um, so then there's disadvantages to the drill ball. I think the, the biggest disadvantages for me are that the, the way that it connects into your computers, USB 2.0 or um, FireWire. Now they've added FireWire, and then if you buy the Drobo share, another couple hundred bucks, then you get uh, Ethernet. But there's no ESATA, so it's it's again. I didn't want to I, I didn't want to get into speed, but it is a lot slower than an ESATA device. But that's not going to be my deciding factor, right? So let's keep that in mind as we're kind of hmm. going through, because I want you to help me decide. But the Drobo's expensive, five, six hundred dollars for the hardware. Mm. You got to put the drives in it, right? Workout thinks it's a bad idea. Can you expand on that? For me, thinks that the Drobo's a bad idea for for Category Five. Crazy Glue mentioning that FireWire 800 isn't that bad, really. Which, yeah, I can go for that. But only one of my systems has FireWire. So I would have to connect it into that system or install a FireWire card in, in a, a standalone system to use as a backup server or redundant storage server to make it a NAS, unless I bought the, the DroboShare.